So I want to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Homeward Richards. It's really a pleasure here to connect with you. Thank you. Uh, so in this podcast, we talk about people. We are actually concentrating on the people. And then, of course, also what the people do. Uh, so I want to thank you so much. And I want you to do a little presentation of yourself to the people who are probably seeing you for the first time. What would you like to say about yourself? Hello, and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi A14. And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. Yeah, thank you first of all for having me on board. Um, I appreciate that. So my name's Howard Richards. I am a, a youth worker, senior youth worker in the Coventry area, um, originally from Birmingham. And my journey has stemmed from being a young carer and looking after my mother from a young age um, to performing as a musician and using my talents to encourage younger people with changing the narratives in everyday life. Changing the narrative. Anyway, we really do have enough time to talk about all this one today. Uh, so you were born in, you were born in Birmingham, right? Most definitely Birmingham. <laughs> uh, okay, so tell us about that. Uh, I've never been to UK, though I've talked to a lot of people in the UK. So tell us about that, the, the place. Let us uh, give us some feel of the, the place where you were born. Birmingham. Birmingham is a, it's an interesting place. It's not as big as sort of London, um, but it's a place which is, you know, it's more cultural. There's, you know, different religions, uh, different faiths, different beliefs. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place of, of, of love, I, would, I should say. People are always sort of willing to ask if you're okay. Um, I've never had any issues. Um, however, there, it is quite a, a difficult place to be if you are a young person growing up in around the city, I would say. But almost other than that, it's a, it's a really play, nice place to live. That's interesting. That almost made me want to visit now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richard. So uh, when you were growing up, tell me a little bit about your trajectory. What were you like aiming that you wanted to be? Because like I said before, we are really here to learn about you and also your passion. A, a, bit, a bit like most kids, I had this dream of being a firefighter or, you know, a policeman saving people from burning buildings. But well, that didn't happen. Um, I, I, I fell in um, to not quite knowing what I wanted to be at 13. I went to university. I studied being a paramedic and thought, this isn't for me. What's my purpose? What am I good at? Um, and with that, I was able to um, meet and mentor while I was doing work experience who showed me the ethics of not only being a young carer, but for being a man. And he identified my talents, which was people and music. Um, and that put me on my, on my right way, so it's there. And now I will try to pay attention to, to what you said now about purpose that becomes really very interesting because i think that also reflect what you do today because you are working with the uh, with the youth uh, that is um anyway let, let me suspend that for now we'll come to that later <laughs> so this, <laughs> this idea of purpose what did you start to explore it like uh, you know some people they find it very easy to just go the easy way though know? you don't need to because if you want to find a purpose you need to have to dig a little deeper though no? yeah uh, so when did it become necessary? When did it become important for you to do this? I would say when mom when my mom had a stroke, um, I was in a position where I didn't know what I wanted to do at college. My mom had had a stroke, and it was like, right, I actually need to grow up now. I need to be a man. At and with that, I would be. It, it was a case of, okay, what what am I good at? And I'm I'm a religious person, so I, I always say, God, can you identify to me what what where I need to be or what I should be doing? Um, and, and it was a case of me having to revisit my education. So going back to college and doing a course that I thought was okay, which was more medical side of things. Um, there was a lot of, you know, trials and tribulations throughout, but it was all stepping stone to get me to where I am now. And, and when at that moment, okay, uh, again, sorry for uh, the stroke that your, your mother had. Uh, those are some of the challenges of life. At that time that it was, challenging for you, I want to believe. Yeah. What what helped you to uh, sort of find your footing in defining uh, what you eventually call your uh, identity, your journey, your work? 
what you are going to do as a contribution both to your family and also to the society. So I'm trying to understand what helped you. I would say it was, um, weirdly enough, it was my mom's heart that, that did it. And the reason I say that is, is my mom was, to me, was my superhero. Um, she's still here today. She's still here today. She's my superhero. And I hit a stage whereby, I hit a stage whereby I, I, I kind of seem like whatever situation she was facing, I noticed that she would always overcome it. She had a, a triple bypass. She had strokes, um, a clot on the brain. She lost her walking and her ability to speak. So I feel like my strength had, 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 had almost come from her. Um, and that allowed me to kind of try and sense purpose for myself. I thought, well, if she can do it, I can do it. And it took a lot of, a lot of reading, um, a lot of time alone, and importantly, a lot of forgiveness for myself because I was in a position where I thought I had let myself down with not finishing university. So I would say that was the main reason. All right. Thank, thank you for that. So I also want to believe that those things that you were reading sort of also help you to fine tune uh, your journey. Um, because I, I understand that uh, when you decide that this is the road I want to go, yeah, you don't know what the road is yet, but you say this is where I want to go. You are going to have to find out uh, about it as you journey along it, no? So uh, in that case, it becomes necessary that we need to find out from other people who have been there before, who have journeyed the same road before. And so it becomes important now to talk to mentors, to read books, to go to the classes, to learn, because this time you are not just um, on the loop that the society usually will set for you, no? Uh, when maybe in the in the regular lifestyle you you are a child you need to go to the regular school then from that regular school you need to be promoted to the regular program again until you finish your university yeah this one is a different thing because you have decided what you want to do so you are going to train yourself to become expert in that area so you started to read and all that so yeah. can you help me what were you reading what were those things that you were reading after you decided where you where you want to go I actually read a book by a lady called Joyce Myers, and this book was called The Battlefield of the Mind. And this book absolutely changed my That's thought. powerful. <laughs> yeah. It gave you everyday tools to fight with um, thoughts of self, um, self-hate, uh, self-doubt, um, pushing forward, and creates tools to, to, get, to get the job done, essentially. Um, fitness was a major aspect as well. Um, I, I've always been into boxing and sport, so that also helps as well. I think we often, you know, we look after our outside shell, but in terms of vitamins for our, for our mental health, reading and, and, and my faith, most importantly, is what, what sort of saw me through. All right. Thank, thank you for that. I understand now that, okay, there was this challenge in the house, so you decided to uh, look for a way to make a contribution both to your family and also to the people around you. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, if you go to the United Kingdom, just like many other uh, European society or in the West, as it were, there are a lot of people who really have some challenges. I'm talking of uh, the youth in this case, because that is where we are going to spend most of our conversation today, because you work with them. Yeah. Uh, so this idea of finding a value, finding a purpose for your life, is something that is a kind of um, that is very important because most most of the young people out there do not do not find the purpose, so they are sort of lost, sort of. No, yeah. I interviewed uh, a lady uh, in the UK also who work in this area. Uh, she also have a program where she deal with a lot of uh, a, a young adolescents who are sort of um, having some challenges on how to yeah. find their way around. And of course, we can take this argument to many dimensions, to many angles we want, no? starting from uh, having a role model. Because when, yeah. if you live in a society where you don't have a role model, somebody that looks like you, that is out there that you need to look like, uh, in this way you need to begin to find the path that the person has journeyed before so that you can also be like the person, then it becomes really challenging for you. And of course, this is easy to understand if we are living in the West. This is not our typical society. No? We are sort of stranger here. Uh, because that is the situation, it becomes harder even for our children that are growing up because they find it difficult to find a role model. Yeah. So help me understand this. There in the UK, how do you see the youth around you? 
tell me about that. Then we are going to understand, understand what exactly you do within the youth program. Yeah, this is this is the field where I smile the most. Um, so what we aim to do is let me talk about changing the narratives. We often so I work for a, a CBGC, um, which is the Coventry Boys and Girls Club. Um, so I'm sort of the senior youth uh, leader here on this side, and we work with the court system, so they would have young people that would be on the verge of going to jail and the judge would say, hey, we're going to put you with Howard because we believe there's change in you, but we need to find it. So what I then do is I meet the young person where they're at. If they come and meet me and their mindset is, you know, I, I, I want to be indulging with, with violence or knife crime, I don't tell them off and say, change that right now. It doesn't work like that. What I do is I meet that person where they're currently at. So I tap into their world instead of them tapping into my world because it's not about me, it's about them. Let me understand what it, what is going through this young person's mind. And ultimately, I'll be, uh, I'll be it's, um, love that they often are lacking, love and compassion and a voice just to, and a ear to, 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 to listen to. Um, so we incorporate boxing, uh, musical production, um, life skills. Um, sorry, is that still on? Sorry about that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go on. No problem, yeah. no problem. Life <laughs> skills and these sort of things to sort of meet them where they're at and to open more doors of opportunity, then getting them into employment. Let's start with how the project started, the one that you are working, you are working with now. Tell us about it. Just explain the project itself to us. What, what really is it? Yeah, um, it was my manager, actually, um, Leah. She created a, a project called The Mac Project. And The Mac Project is all about music and change. Um, so with this, we work with young people on an individual basis. We also go into schools. Uh, we do group discussions. Where we go in, we do 50% practical, 50% theory. So when the kids hear that we're coming in, they go, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, we're doing music. So we're like, yeah, we're doing music, but we're also going to learn life skills. So when we go in, we talk about music, we create music. So we get a lot of rappers, singers, poets, um, and we use music as the main substance. But a lot of these young people often talk about, you know, having millions and having, you know, a massive Bentley and, you know, wanting to be the next P. Diddy. And we then talk to them about, OK, what's marketing? OK, what's what? How much do what revenue do record labels make? You know, what's a, pub, a publishing deal? And it's these things that we, as I said, we meet them where they are, but we add in a bit more, you know, knowledge so they're understanding of how industry works. It's pretty cool. Mm. Thank you for that, uh, Richard. You see, um, this podcast, actually where this po podcast is coming from, it's a research project that I carried out here in Italy, in Northern Italy, where I live, for between 2013 to 2015. Actually, more than that. Uh, okay, that is a that is a day that we basically gather the data. Yeah. Where we are trying, we're trying to understand the life of the Africans here in in Italy. How did they come here? What are they doing here? What is the relationship between them and the local people? So some of the things that we also find out is this complaint. Uh, sometimes this challenge that people have that is discrimination. Okay, we cannot deny that all these are there, but we also realize that. Yes, people, we have all these challenges, but we also have resources among us. We, we are not empty-headed. Uh, whether you are looking at people who just come from, I don't know, from Somalia, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Ivory Coast, these are human beings that have already been formed before they left their country. Yeah. And so we cannot just end it here with the fact that, okay, we are foreigners, so we are going to be suffering all our life. Why don't we sit down and try to help each other? Those yeah. who know can teach those who do not know. That is actually the basis behind uh, our e-learning platform. So I really like it very well when we are trying to tap into this resource. It makes me very happy, you know? Mm -hmm. So now what I'm trying to drag out here, uh, Richard, is when you talk with these young people, what did they tell you are some of the things that push them to becoming sort of near rebel, as it were, you know? But what lead them to that situation where they are in between going to J or going to reformation. Help me uh, with that. Often it, the common denominator is um, lack of father figure, lack of um, 
compassion and lack of understanding. Um, a lot of the young people I work with have come from single parents. Um, they and you know they, well, one thing I do always identify is that they're very close to mom. They they talk a lot about their moms, even though there's this aggressive side, you know. But we need to be careful when we say aggressive because it's not aggressive. It's just that's their element of showing showing love almost. Um, and and that's that's one thing that I would say massively is the lack of having that that male role model and understanding. I read a book um, yesterday. It's called Cry Like a Man, and this book talks about how sort of males are, you know, we're, we're kind of not steered towards crying and we build this defense mechanism and with the young people I work with, their defense mechanism might be, you know, smashing things or getting into fights or carrying a knife. Um, and it's about sort of changing that, but understanding. So when, when this situation uh, happened, of course, you explained that then, of course, you put them into some pro program like training, like uh, happy then to, to produce music, for example, would become a, a kind of an escape, an escape from the situation that they found themselves. How do you usually, okay, you also said before that you don't just bring them into your world, you try to enter into their world so they become a little bit easier for them. Yeah. So uh, how much is psychology playing a role in this work that you do with the people? Massive role. Because when we meet them, often it's, what, what I tend to do is, I, also, I, I like to say, you know, tell me about your world, who's in it? So they might say, um, oh, it's just my brother. So I say, okay, who else? Who's your favourite uncle? Then they start smiling. They say, it's my uncle so-and-so. Okay, what, what car does your uncle drive? Oh, he's got a red BMW. Oh, what's his house like? Oh, he's got a five-bedroom house. He's got a parrot. He goes on holiday every five years. So now what I'm doing is I'm, put, I'm making myself a part of their journey subconsciously. Then they want to tell me more. So subconsciously, their guards go down. Then when I see them over the weeks, it allows me to have mutual converse conversation so I can say, how's your, your uncle so-and-so doing or your auntie so-and-so doing? And you almost become somewhat a family member of them. So, you know, um, that's the tactic that I tend to use. Mm -hmm. And for you to be able to use this tactic, meaning you have to undergo training yourself, no? Because yeah. like we were saying before, uh, first you find out what you want to do, how you want to serve, because we basically live by serving. I think Mohamed Ali was the one who was saying that our service to other is the rent we pay for being alive, or actually we pay in this world. No? Yeah. And now that you discover how you want to serve, you have to go and train yourself. Yeah. So tell me about this training part of it, because now you are talking as an expert, you go to these young people, you help them to to correct their role so that they don't end up badly. And you are happy there, you're, you're also happy the society. So, but this training, tell me about it. Yeah, so the, the, the training side of things is, there's always ongoing training because we have to make sure that we're doing safeguarding. We have to make sure that we're, you know, we're having health and, you know, health and safety checks. My first session that I had, I had somebody handing an eight inch knife, um, so then you have to follow the right measurements when someone hands in a knife. Um, and then we also have to make sure that, okay, is this person that I'm working with, uh, you know, okay with being spoken to by a male? Because we've had a few where they've lashed out and hit another male because they're not comfortable with it. So there's the, the training is always ongoing, making sure that we're always following protocol. Um, and, and, and essentially it's, it will always keep changing even down to cases of dealing with young people that are going through fields of extremism um, is another case. So it's vital that my training sessions that, we'll, that we do um, is always sort of upped each month, each year to stay on track, especially now with social media as well. It's, we have to be on our A game with social media and on, on the side, the cyber side of things also. All right. Now I'm sort of curious on um when you when you meet these uh, these children uh, who come to this uh, sort of um, rehabilitation program, I don't know if I can say it like that. Um, did they sort of tell you that they have a mission in life? What did they share with you, like where they want to go? Yeah, they they, they always come in with the the mission. I always say they, a hidden mission. Um, a lot of our young people will talk about you know being professional footballers. Um, you know, being rappers. Ultimately, I would say the common denominator is that they want to be in sort of the limelight, the majority, whether that's acting, rapping, sports. Um, 
I've had one who different because he wanted to be a chef. But a lot of the time it's they want to get into sort of things that's in the limelight. Hey, I'm, I'm here. Can you can you notice me? And that tells me a lot. Uh, now, let's look back a little bit. Let's see if we can get uh, this angle, get a different angle from it. You see, um, I think the society basically uh, is like a jungle. Uh, as a jungle in that you really need to go there and form yourself and become somebody. There is no preset already set out for you so that you just come there you like a suit. You just wear it and that is you. No, you are going to have to form it every day, sort of tuning yourself jumping or uh, jumping over all the whole obstacles on your way of course the one you cannot jump over then you are you are a victim there like the forest no mm -hmm. and there is this um uh, this uh, story that is very common across many uh culture which is coming of age as it were no yeah. that you have to pass through a lot of things to come of age and sometimes in certain culture there are people who help you to pass some some obstacles Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes in life you don't have people that help you so i'm looking at you now as somebody who is there to help some people yeah. to pass through some of the hurdles some of the obstacles they have in front of them so if that is the case how do you feel about that i i, I love the responsibility um i was mentored by someone who was once a stranger and i genuinely as cliche as it sounds would say that this person is the person that allowed me to change my route and 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 there's a reason why i'm alive in essence everybody needs a mentor regardless of age um you know race gender everybody needs a mentor so it, although we talk about it being a responsibility you know life's about guiding you know i'm all about building people and, and life is about building people um, and i'm learning along the way as well so i, I love the responsibility <laughs> that is interesting. That is interesting. Really, really, it is really interesting because we find this kind of characteristics in many culture, both in the Asian and also in the present. Of course, currently we would say the coach, the person who is sort of directing you, who is telling you this is how you want to pass it. But also in the Asian time, we also used to have this 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 individual, this characteristics in our different culture, and it's very very important. It is when we lack this one that you have a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of deviance, as it were, in the society because people don't know where they want to go and because we are not very intelligent. We are not that smart, as it were. But if we have somebody to help us, then we might be able to find our route in life. Also because we are not supposed to be alone. We are supposed to live this life sharing it, no? Yeah. But the life we live is in communion. We must share it with others. We must help each other, if I want to put it like that. Okay, now, I will say that, Richard. Uh, these people, how do they get to you? Is it like maybe somebody was trying to commit a crime or somebody was about to commit suicide or somebody actually was beaten in the house for this reason they call you to come and intervene or they come on their own to you because they cannot figure out this challenge that they are facing? Tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, with the MAP project, there's uh, two routes. Usually we, we work off referral. So the social worker or case worker um, would go onto our website and they would refer the, the young person's name, bit about them and what they've done, and then we would get in contact as soon as possible. I do have um, young people that sort of reach out to me also via email or via my work phone um, to say, hey, I'm feeling a bit low um, or, or there's things going on. But we've always got an open door here so they can always, you know, come in and within those sort of working hours and come and speak, cry, use the studio draw or, or, or write um so that's usually how we would work all right now in this journey when these people when this uh, young individual gets to you uh is it like they stay with you or in this program that you are you see it's a place it's a it's, um it's a house where they come for training then they go to their home or they stay with you and they, you live there you live with them together in the same apartment or something like that yeah, so we have a, a massive uh, complex here in Coventry. Um, so the bottom floor is a cafe. We have a sports hall there for football and basketball. Uh, on the second floor, we have a brand new music studio, a dance room. And above on the third floor, we have a, a boxing facility. So in, envision a massive building with loads of different rooms 
um, that you, that the, the public are able to use. That's the building that we use here. Mm -hmm. But but these uh, these people that come to you, do they stay there or do they come from yeah. house? Yeah, so they wouldn't stay here. They'd stay the majority of the day, um, but then they would leave and go back to the, the place that where they're, they're staying, whether that's with um, a, a social worker or with parents. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay, that's fine. I get that. And now, uh, in terms of the collaboration of their parents, because I want to believe that I say it again that your role is very important. Is that you are happy to straighten up the head of the people, though, so that they can become better individuals in the society. And that is a yeah. that is a noble project. It's not something very not not everybody is doing that. No, that is really something that that is uh, very laudable. No, we really need to thank you for that job. Now, the parent, I'm sure they also need to appreciate that. So what role do the parent play in this journey of their children? The parents play a massive role because when they come to the MAP project, it's, it's all about engagement. I always say you can't force engagement. If I had a restaurant and I knew it was 10 out of 10 and I saw multiple people outside and I wanted them all to come into my restaurant, I can't force that engagement. But what I can do is I can influence it. So we try to link in and, and bridge the gap with the parent and the young person. Um, obviously, as you can imagine, though, it's quite difficult if both parents aren't on board, because that means that when they're here, they're, in, they're engaging, but when they're home, they're not. So we try to bridge that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, the, other, the other time, I think it should be a month ago, so I was interviewing uh, a yoga teacher in, in, uh, in Australia, and then I was asking the policy because, of course, I'm going to ask you a similar question just now. The people that come to you, why did they come to you? you know? uh, so she was saying, ah, well, you see, uh, people don't usually come here because life is too good, no? <laughs> because <laughs> you are going to have to participate in things like this because that is a problem you are trying to resolve, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so what I really want to ask you here is that uh, the people that come to you, why? what did they complain about? What did they tell you that is wrong, that they are com that the re which become the reason for why they are there? Yeah. Often they don't really say. Um, often when they are handed over, um, we, we can see that they've been involved in something that they shouldn't have been. Um, and a lot of the time they do have a face of remorse where they're not proud of the reason why they're here. So in actual fact, when they do come and approach the guys at the Mac, it's it, it's a, it's they actually don't want to talk about it. They want to they don't want to remember that side of them, which is a good thing because that's where there's an element of change and we, we can then work on that because it's it's not about how you've come in, it's about how you leave. Okay, that is that is very good. And uh, now I would like to know, how do they live usually? Uh, like maybe for example now, say 12 children come to you, uh, then at the end of the day, what really is the result? So that is, uh, let, let's put it like that. Yeah, so usually we would do one-to-one -one sessions um, and, and normally that would be, tailored to what the young person wants to do, if that's catering, music, or whatnot. Um, and we would follow the protocol. So um, we'd set tasks, we'd make sure that those tasks are complete in the day. We would then do an evaluation. So how did they find it? What's changed? And we measure it to when they first met me, to four weeks to since they met me, to see the measurements of change. And that might be as simple as when they first were, were with me, they didn't engage in conversation. We get a few that are often shy, don't really want to look. But then when you're with them, they, they, they smile and they're laughing. These small ripples create massive waves. Um, so that's how we would usually measure it. As a, as a case study, as it were, say maybe, for example, uh, because these people have come to those, uh, this program, this project uh, that you are in, uh, can we say because of this one, they have become somebody in life? A kind of a case study, some a person that have passed through there who has not become somebody because of the program. Is there any case study you can share with me like that? Yeah, we've got um one of our biggest sort of case studies, our, our biggest testimony is a young person who um was with me from doing an offense, um, which I probably can't go into because of confidentiality. Uh, it was quite a big offense. Um, and they attended the session, they were quite disengaged at the time, um, but I changed that. <laughs> And they have now gone on to completing their level five uh, outdoor skiing course and are going to be doing instructing um, abroad in Austria. So this is a young person that came with no grades on the verge of jail to being a qualified skiing instructor in a different country. 
Hmm, that is really very interesting. That is really, really very interesting. Uh, um, so uh, this program like this, is it something that is farmed all across uh, the United Kingdom or is only in the city where you live? Yeah. Is something that is similar? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, it's, so it's currently just in the uh, in, in Coventry City. I mean, there are other, other services that offer similar, um, but the MAP project, which we run, is just in Coventry. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, but do you uh, face some... Okay, to say that you don't have challenges would be lying to ourselves, no? <laughs> yeah. So do you face some particular challenges in running a, a project like this? Uh, what are some of those challenges that you face on a regular basis? Yeah, I mean, we, we all face sort of challenges. Um, on a regular basis, I would say the biggest challenge is, is getting the child from out in the community to, from out in the community, oh, has it got off? Sorry about that. From out in the community into, mm. into a place of work um, is what I would say the biggest challenge is because they hear about the project, but they're reluctant to come in. So that would be our, 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 my, one of my biggest challenges. But other than that, as soon as they're in here, they don't want to leave. Wow, that is interesting. <laughs> me that, 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 is, that is a kind of um, a community life as a way, no? Yeah, yeah. So are you the only person that is working with them there or there are some other persons who have to intervene? I don't know, maybe depending on the case, I don't know what kind of case really in, to, in the specific uh, instances. So are there other people that come there? Who are they? What kind of people? Yeah, so there's myself and and four rivers. So there's me. There's also my, my colleague, John Bernard, who's a professional poet. Um, we've also got Joe and Dan, who specialise in mastering, um, recording and mixing in musical production. So four different personalities. So if we know we have someone that's more of a, a serious case, they would be with myself, would be with John. Um, and then if we found that there was someone with a more serious case, but their, their um, style of speaking is a bit quieter, a bit softer, then we would usually go to sort of Joe and Dan. So we've got the right personality for the right person here. Mm -hmm. All right. Boys and Guests, Coventry uh, Boys and Guests Club. That is what it is. It is it's a, a form of club, no? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a lovely club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you also organize maybe a dance or party uh how do you how do you make these people stay you know what how do you entice them to stay um being me <laughs> i'm a nice guy i'm pretty cool um and i just try to get my i try to get my character across everything's about love um and i often you know since reading these new books I, i'm often now trying to encourage young people to to let their emotions out if you want to cry come here and cry you know, if you want to go upstairs and hit the punch bags, hit the punch bags, you know, and, and this is a place where they can be vulnerable in a positive way. And, and you know, that they, they, they like that, the fact that they can be. So that's how I would I sort of say I would encourage them to stay. All right. Thank you. So this is a project that is uh, owned by you or you are working in a kind of a governmental project. So uh, can you share something on that line? Yeah. So it was it was founded by my manager, Leah. Um, and I sort of took it up off a, on, under a wing and sort of ran with the idea. Um, so it, it's literally a service that we're offering to anybody in Coventry um, and, and, and to any schools, any young person. If you have a young person or if there's a young person you feel is difficult to engage with, that, that, that they feel like there is no understanding, bring that young person to us. Um, we don't just offer this, uh, the MAP project, we also offer a, a service for young people to to come and take part in sports here as well on on two days in the week where they can play football and activities catering and we also do activities outside so that might be ice skating skiing um and and loads loads more mm -hmm. all right now i don't know if i've asked you this before i, I may have forgotten yeah. that do you know why uh, these boys and girls are in the situation that they are, that they need your help? I mean, what lead to their situation? Yes. Yeah, Usually, so, most of the cases. Yes. Yeah, so, the, the Boys and Girls Club has, um, it's always been here. It's run for many years now. But they wanted to add something to the club, the organization. And I believe it's because they got to a stage where they, they also felt, okay, we've got the facilities. We need to get engaged with more young people now because we've got the facilities. And that's why they created this, this sort of um, project to add more value to what we stand by. And that's, you know, helping out in the community, 
you know, doing the right thing at the right time. All right. Thank you for that. Richard. Now, knowing um, the situation of uh, these people that need your help that, that come there, no? uh, you know, one thing is, is to say, OK, you are hungry. I'll give you food to eat. You no. Know, so you are no longer hungry. But if I know that the root cause of your hunger is because in your, in your house, there is no money, no source of income, then uh, maybe empowering you to get a job is better than giving you food because if I give you food, I'm only resolving the problem only for today. So actually, what I'm trying to ask here is knowing some of the problem that lead them to where they are before they come to you, what kind of solution do you think can be prescribed, at least to the to the to the average case, for example? Yeah, I would all, I, I always use the whole selling the dream. Um, you know, selling the dream. So if it's that they want to be a musician. We take some of our young people to professional recording studios so they can get a feel for it. They can look around and go, I want to do this full time. I want to do this. And then we also encourage bringing in people from the community who have, you know, accolades that they might have been professional rappers or footballers or sports stars or doctors. or So then we bring them in-house. And then we also do a workshop called the ESF where we get them ready for employability. So we prepare them. We do role play where we prepare them for interviews, paperwork, and how to dress, health and hygiene, you know, smelling good, dressing good. So these are the tools we do actually do throughout the sessions. So maybe, for example, one of the boy or girls that come to your club is interested in developing a personal passion. Maybe, for example, she's a musician, she likes music, but she wants to become not just singing, but produce music also for other people as a job. So she wants to become an entrepreneur. A thing like that, uh, do you, what, can, what kind of help do you have for the people? Yeah, we've got, because we're such a big organisation in commentary, it means we can kind of get our foot through many doors. Um, like we said, we, we're big artists with massive uh, musical festivals. And we also get a budget as well, which is pretty cool. So fortunately, we've got the right links to make things happen um, because of the name that we have behind us and what we stand for. So we've often had guys that are coming as, um, you know, singers, but have left as rappers because we've engaged them and linked that partnership with a, a, a poet um so it's it's there's, there's i would actually say there's nothing that is we're unable to do in terms of allow, allowing them to have a feel for a profession that they want to go into but now say for example somebody come in and this person um doesn't even know what they want to do how do you help them? how do you chat them into finding a purpose for their for their self because in the beginning we were talking about uh purpose no and that become very important for you you mm. find your purpose but say a young person come into the club and she he or she doesn't know a purpose in life because not of not all of us know why we are here, you know. Yeah. So how do you chat these people to finding a true reason inside of them that they want to pursue in life? I'd I'd always say that it's it's you shouldn't. It's, sometimes you don't always know what you want to do, but through conversation you can kind of see talents trickling out without them even knowing. So there's a been there's been people here where they've been. They've not known what they want to do, but they've been pretty funny or humorous or they're always, you know, funny with every conversation. I've said, you should get into acting or you should get into vlogging or be a comedian. You know, there's always traits that come up. But over time, they usually come up with the suggestion of something that they wouldn't mind doing. Now, in terms of the project itself, what would you say is the primary mission? How would you describe it? How would you describe the mission in a very uh, short way? Yeah. I would say, um, as we said at the start, I'd definitely say changing the narrative and identifying the dream um, is what I would say. So it literally is changing the mindset, opening a new world that they haven't explored to put them on a pedal stool. Um, that's it, really. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, OK, you personally... You are running this project. Um, you're having a very key role to play here. And like I said before, and yeah. I want to repeat it again, your role is very, very important, no? Yeah. That you are happy, uh, these uh, young kids, to uh, find a route, to find a value in, in their life, no? This is very important. Yeah. And then you also have a situation at home that you have to run and all that. How do you manage to do all this together? Because I don't see it to be a very simple thing to do, no? Nah, this is where work-life balance kicks in. <laughs> um, 
So this is where I, I, I make sure I'm focusing on my training. I like to run. I like to eat well uh, and socialize with family members and friends. But my work doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, uh, it's my, when, when you're living in purpose, it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> it really doesn't. And how do you keep yourself motivated to continue this work? Because sometimes, all of us, we, we do have some down as an up moment sometimes because it's not always up, sometimes it's also down. Yeah. So yeah. How, do you, how do you encourage yourself? Because if you have to encourage others, you need to be encouraged for yourself too. So how do you do that? Yeah, through, through reading and, and in every day exploring something new, um, whether that's new uh, podcasts that I watch, whether that's um, new books. Um, but ultimately what keeps me going is realizing that you know I, i'm waving the flag not only for me and my career path but for for, for my mother you know for one day when i have children it's, it's I'm, I'm building a legacy also for myself so that's all to be what keeps me going like, uh, i just wanted to ask you something before i forget it the demography that you concentrated is you only uh the african diaspora or also or any type of person is welcome yeah any we have any sort of here we have from Caribbean to African to Polish um, to to Asian, it's all mixed. Uh, how do you manage to uh, to deal with all this bubble, all of them put together? No, is it is it that easy for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, love is a language we all can um, sort of communicate with, and that's the language that I use. So it's, it's, it's quite easy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Richard. I've asked you all the questions I wanted to ask you, yeah. and I really appreciate the time. Now, to conclude the conversation, what would be a kind of a final message? Uh, it can be maybe something I need to ask you to conclude it. Uh, so conclude it in your own way. I think I would conclude it with what we've touched base with in terms of finding your purpose. Identify if you're money-driven or purpose-driven, you know, and, and, and walk with that. And the biggest thing I would say is, is, small ripples create massive waves and don't worry about how it looks currently see the picture for what it's going to be and if in if in any week or any month you can help at least you know one person then you've done a brilliant job throughout thank you so much richard it has been a pleasure on my part thank you oh, thank you for having me on board i appreciate that if you enjoy this podcast make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes Rate and review Obehead podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead everyone for. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you in the next episode.